So I'm out here from California because I met this developer online and we had the same objective with respect to gentrifying areas before other groups can come in and gentrify them. We, uh, we have the same values as far as improving the economic position of, of our people. And I'm a real estate investor, um, but he is just doing it on a totally different level. Um, his name is Chris Senegal, so I'm, I'm about to meet him at uh, a property that I purchased. And, uh, and we're gonna go from there. And then while I'm here, I'm gonna look at a, a few other things that he's working on in the area. Um, and we'll see how far we can take it. But so far, uh, I've never seen the property. I purchased the property without looking at it. Um, but the goal is to purchase that one and then to start buying up um, as much as I can in this neighborhood, Fifth Ward, Houston, because the values I expect to increase exponentially. And uh, Chris uh, is the, the land developer for the investment property that I bought. And uh, he is really on to something as far as developing this area. Um, so just a real, real good dude, real good situation. So I'm excited about it. So I'm meeting him now. And if I don't get lost, we'll be all right. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. So this is uh, so this is this is Chris Senegal I was talking about. So he's the one that purchased the land, and he's the one that built these, and he's doing a lot in this area. And I actually met him through uh, social media because I was actually looking in this area, among other areas in the country, to see where I was going to go in and do exactly what he's doing. He's doing it on. He's far more advanced than I am, but he's doing it on a, a, a whole different level. So. Um, when I saw this, and he outlined the, a lot of the opportunity that was yeah. going on in Fifth Ward, um, and I just I bought it without even having to come see it, like it was a no-brainer. <laughs> so let, yeah. let's let's go in. Yeah, let's let's go, go give me a tour. We'll check it out. This heat, man. I forgot about this heat. Yeah, man. <laughs> no joke. Porta potty comes with it. We count that as a we count that as a half bathroom right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a big eight foot garage door too, so. That's a two car garage. Yeah, big two car garage. Right here it's gonna have the pocket door. This is a big pantry. I always run it to it so that you can put the uh, the, the wine fridge. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets some cabinetry all along the back. The stove goes right there under the exhaust. Yeah. Is there a fence here or, is it, or do we fence it off ourselves? After no, there's gonna be a fence. Okay. Yeah, they can put a fence right there. Okay. Yeah, we can go upstairs. So, all your tennis space down, all bedrooms upstairs. Okay. Wash and dry closet here. Okay, so the master here. Be on that wall. And then, you know, here. Big walk-in shower. Yeah. Uh, big garden tub will be here. Mm -hmm. Vanity. Yeah, vanity here with two double two sinks. Two sinks, yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Big mirror. Uh, this is the toilet closet. Yeah. And then the bigger walk-in closet back here. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's all right. On each side, and then they show the bathroom in the middle. Yeah, so that's ready to get in right now. <laughs> We leave it in there for a couple of days and make sure it holds water and doesn't leak or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. I'm going to wrap up the walls. Now, tell me how, how many banks you went to again before oh, you got the financing for the first three. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, it's even if you look outside, outside now, like the whole thing here, that's all banks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we got the bank here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we got the bank here. Or worse. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And so there was no new, there was no new construction. So when the banks would send the appraisers over here, they would, they would say there's no activity. You couldn't comp it out. Yeah, couldn't comp. There was nothing, no new construction in this zip code at all. Yeah. So 23 of them told me no, and the 24th, who actually had done some projects in California, where they were the first to 
go in and build some new construction. Yeah. They finally decided to give me the funding. But that was only after I had everything done. Like it was shovel ready for vertical construction. So yeah. I had to do everything else, like out of pocket or private investors. Yeah. Yeah. So how many people do you think would have quit after going to 20 banks? 99.9% .9 of everybody. <laughs> you're doing, so you're, you're, you're showing people, you have a mentorship program, uh -huh. right? That I joined. Yeah. 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 Um, you have, uh, you and, and then you have like, you broke it down into like some smaller mm -hmm. services that you could provide to people. Yeah. You do consultations mm -hmm. for really good prices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, consultations, and I was able to get you on the phone really, really mm -hmm. quick. Yeah. Um, so I think that's absolutely uh, amazing. And you still have no idea. I don't think you. I think maybe you got used to it. <laughs> you still have no idea what you did for me because yeah. I was just waiting for somebody to jump. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like being on, you know, being on a cliff and you can't see the bottom. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't trying to get the first <laughs> jump, but if you see somebody else jump, right, and, and they walk and they get up and walk away, yeah. you're like, okay, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. So um, that, was, that was a big thing for me too, man, because like arguing, debating with even other investors a lot about what we could do. Yeah, everybody was all, you know, they would always give you all the negative arguments, and some of them would come across come across so well articulated that you believe them. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like you can't argue with it because you have no, you have nothing to counter that yeah. argument. Yeah, no yeah. proof. So for me, it was just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, I'm just gonna get it done, and I'm gonna show them that it's possible versus trying to debate with them. Yeah, and convince them. So, well, yeah, yeah no idea. Really working. Now you've got uh, some commercial stuff that you're working on too. I saw a building, commercial building you were looking at, mm -hmm. that you wanted to preserve the historical value. That's the Bible Black Project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's wrap it up. Oh, come on. Let's go. Let's go. So Fifth Ward, historically black neighborhood. Mm -hmm. These these ten blocks right around here, yeah. or it's called French Town. This is where the first black Creole uh, from Louisiana came after slavery was abolished. Okay, and they set up shop right over there. So that it's been, it's been called French Town ever since. Okay, uh, Fifth Ward was one of the first black neighborhoods established after slavery mm. in Houston. So, lot lot of rich history. It's gonna be nice to to get it back to what it was. Right. I think yeah. there's a there's a shift coming too, uh, an economic shift among us. Oh yeah. Because there's a lot more a lot more focus being put on spending with each other. Right. I really hope it sticks after all what's going on right now settles down. Yeah. I mean, you look at um, the history of the civil rights movement. The only thing that was missing was the collective economics. Yeah. You know, we uh, we tried to convince other people to accept us and treat us as equals. Yeah. And, you know, generation after generation, it's failed. So. Mm -hmm. This is Lions Avenue. Lions Avenue was the the main street of Fifth Ward where all the businesses were. Yeah. And so you see at the proximity to the freeway again, These this is the Buy the Block project right here. So they're, they're already renovating this house. This house was built in 1925. Oh, wow, okay. And we're bringing it back to life. This building on the left was built in 1920. Okay. And so we're gonna renovate it, put a rooftop deck on it, and turn it into a big restaurant. Um, we're gonna have a, a couple of guys that have really successful food trucks out here. Gonna give them their first brick and mortar location. Man, you guys, you got you give me the blueprint. <laughs> Wall. Yeah. From 1925, man. So we're gonna keep a lot of that ship lap yeah. exposed. Yeah, yeah. Getting rid of all the termite. Damaged wood. We yeah. redid all the piers, yeah. all the support beams. Yeah. Just give it some new sturdiness, you know. So put the termite uh, shields on it. Okay. Uh, Do you think you'll be building any commercial space? I mean, outside of outside of what you got going on. I'm gonna show you something in a second. Yeah. But I will. So this is the other half of this project. So we bought all of these town, um, all these houses too. Okay. So 18 of them in total. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I came in and we cleaned up the roofs, replaced the vents on the roofs, uh -huh. did the landscaping, did the, put the tent on the windows to make sure the tenants have lower electricity bills in the summer. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we put this fence up because there's a lot of foot traffic going through here, like people riding their bikes through here gotcha. that weren't part of the community. Right. A lot of these are long term tenants. Some of them have been here 20 years. Yeah. So, there's an opportunity to just reposition the neighborhood. That's another part of things that used to happen in gentrification. Yeah. This landlord was ready to sell, they were just ready to retire kids didn't really want to take over the property yeah 
So, you know, if we don't buy it, somebody else is going to buy it. And the people that usually buy it don't care about the tenants. Right. Their goal is to renovate it and raise the rents immediately. Okay. You know, but for me, it's like, we didn't, I'm not raising anybody's rent. Everybody's rent is going to stay the same yeah. as long as they're here. Because we got, we can make money by increasing the commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Renovating the commercial, increasing the revenue from there. And you also, I, I want to mention, you also priced, that I bought, the, those, yeah. you priced those really, really well too. I did, I did. Yeah. I, I could have put them at a higher price, but I yeah. wanted to make sure that we could afford them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, if, if we can create a model where everybody can afford it and buy it and ride the wave of value appreciation, yeah. then we all increase our net worth collectively. That's my guy's doing design work. What's, a, is What's up, bro? That's a builder? Welcome to the neighborhood, man. We're trying to, trying to do better. Oh, well, I'm going to be here. I'm, I, any way I can help, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, man. You're going to see this a whole nother situation in about, about two weeks. Yeah. That's all right. That's yeah. all right. That's all right. Yeah. So Isaac is actually a Grammy winning multi-platinum music producer. Is he? <laughs> yeah. Oh but man, he just does he just does this kind of stuff on the side. Yeah, you know, just like you know, creative people. We always try to find ways to reinvent ourselves. He does movies too. Wow, that is so funny, man. I used to rap back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. I had a uh, they offered me a, a deal, but it was a it was a poor people's deal. <laughs> <laughs> like I was making more in real estate at the time, but yeah, man, that's funny. Yeah. So I'm getting this property under contract too. Uh, been negotiating with the sellers to get that. Yeah. The goal is to try to get this whole little curve right here. Yeah. Get all that. Just, so that way I'll be controlling both. The, this is one of the main streets, and that's the other main street into Fifth Ward from yeah. the Fifth Freeway. So I'll be able to control both of the gateways, you know, to, yeah. to change the look and the feel when you're going into the community will help out a lot. Oh, yeah. And this is, this is, this is amazing. I just, I mean, I was, I was telling, uh, I was telling Micah earlier, like y'all used to it out here, right? Like you used to, like you, that's just normal day of business for you, mm -hmm. while pulling up and seeing all black folks, oh, yeah. you know, from every, mm -hmm. where I'm from, nah, yeah, none of that. Yeah. Nah, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't even say it's, it's normal here. I made a, a intentional effort to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like most of the time you wouldn't see that here either. Gotcha. Yeah. It's something else new. All these these green markers and this green bike path lane, they put that in over the last eight months. None that's of this a was good here. sign, yeah. That's yeah, it's a sign that the other people are getting ready to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you asked me about other commercial space, yeah, other yeah. commercial deals. Yeah. I just put this under contract today. Wow. So this is four and a half acres, and we're going to do mixed use apartment complex with like 220 units and like 25,000 square feet of. Uh, retail commercial space on the building yeah and then on the back side is going to be another small office building right here it's going to be about 15,000 square feet as soon as you cross over the freeway this is still fifth ward but this is the side that's already been gentrified for the most part yeah. revitalized and the reason is, is that big mixed use development you're talking about is right here so just you see, remember how close we are to all of the projects we just left yeah where the cranes are right there, yeah. that's going to be 150 acres of high-end hotels, restaurants, office buildings, condos, mm. and apartments. Right here. That's crazy. I mean, you can see the density of the townhouses they're already built and already sold. Like an housing project. Yeah, yeah. One of, one of the nicer ones here. But these are selling, these well, these all sold in the 330s, 340s. These sold in the 4s, 450 Like I said, man. Three, four years ago, when I even when I bought the property in 2013, it was nothing yeah. over here. It was desolate. So it's rapidly changing. The sentiment of the, the residents that live there, because I'm sure you approach some residents to see if they wanted to sell, right? I, I do not do that. Okay. Zero displacement. I don't want to displace a single person. I don't want to convince anybody to sell their house. Mm. Because when you when you remove them, that, that family misses out on the opportunity to have the value appreciation. Gotcha, gotcha. So my, that, that property I bought was drug infested, abandoned, mm -hmm. um, prostitution, field, mm -hmm. and it was it was a nuisance for the neighborhood. That's the only properties I buy. Got it. If it's not occupied where I can keep the tenants in place, I only want to I only want to replace bad with good. Got it, got it. Okay, all right. I'll make sure I keep that in mind. Quick tour, man. I appreciate your time. No problem. So I gotta run to this meeting, but then I'll I'll meet back up with y'all. 
Uh, Maestro's? Yeah, Maestro's, yeah. Did they, were they able to change the time? Yeah, 7 o'clock. Okay, cool. All right, man. All right, see you in a little while. All right, man. I was really impressed with, with, with not just him, but with what he said about not displacing anybody. And I'm glad he mentioned that because I'd have came in here knocking on doors and you know doing my marketing and trying to get you know buy up everything i can and that really would have been a bad move because that defeats the whole purpose right we're not trying to displace anybody because i, I want to keep the same spirit here that he has with benefiting the, the community so i'm glad he, he did say that so vacant lots trap houses and things like that i'm going to adopt that business model and do the same thing that he's doing but most likely what will be more easier for me is once he finishes developing, I just buy him from him and then just keep him from, for long-term holds. Um, and, and we'll see what happens, but man, it's a, it's a good opportunity. I'm, I'm excited about it.